earnest twang of Woody Guthrie's voice accompanied my pilgrimage to his hometown of Okima, Oklahoma. As Woody sang of redwood forests and diamond deserts, I drove past tract housing and box stores. The tinny, gravelly recordings felt more congruous as the landscape opened up and concrete turned to dirt and grass. It sounded as if it had sprung directly from the dry Oklahoma soil. I call my trip a pilgrimage because I'm a fan of Woody Guthrie, and making the trip 100 years after he was born made it even more poignant. I was a little worried it might not live up to my expectations, but it did. I found a town unaffected by fame. I found warm, friendly faces willing to let me in. The hard work of generations have shaped this town into one of pragmatism and function, not a celebration of fame. So there's little to mark this place as special. While there's a street named for Woody Guthrie and his name is on a water tower, there are no neon signs declaring Woody World or Guthrie Town, no theme park, not even a Woody Guthrie Museum. There is a small park in the middle of downtown with two murals and a statue. It was there I met my guide for the day. His name is Dee Jones, and he's dedicated to keeping Woody Guthrie's legacy alive in Okima. Jones is a member of the Woody Guthrie Coalition, the group responsible for the annual Woody Guthrie Folk Festival, which brings in internationally known musicians to Okima. Well, Woody Guthrie is a hometown boy here in Okima, and uh, we do it to keep the the music alive, to keep the name Woody Guthrie alive, and to promote Okima, Oklahoma. I hopped in Dee's truck and he drove me a few blocks away to a vacant lot. He pointed and said, that's where Woody's house was. There was a group of trees and waving green grass. Nestled atop a small hill on the back of the lot were stacks of old rectangular stones that were all that remained of Woody's childhood home. There were no signs, no plaques, only singing birds and windswept trees. One tree in particular was special. It had been carved into the shape of a guitar and bore the initials WG. On the backside it read, This land is your land. Dee introduced me to the man who took the initiative to carve the makeshift monument. He used a chainsaw. It seemed as fitting of a tribute as anything else. Its crude folksy curves matched the unpolished songs of Woody Guthrie. Justin Osborne, the artist, lives across the street from the property on a parcel of land that looked like it had been carved from hand. Every element was curated, chosen, or sculpted by Osborne. We walked through his workshop over a floor of sawdust. It was a work in progress full of works in progress. As we stepped over the stone remains of Guthrie's home, Osborne noted that Guthrie's notoriety seems to be as strong, if not stronger, outside Okima as it is in his very own hometown. To me, like the people that come in from the East Coast, you know, uh, he's more of an idol to them than he is the local people. But I think that is changing a lot. The longer I was there, the more everything fell into place. The music, the lyrics, the town, the history. I began to feel like Woody's music was a celebration of Okima and the hundreds of towns like it. It's a celebration and a defense of the hard work of the people that keep towns like this and every other moving. As much as they tackle lofty issues that affect us all, the songs are also about guys like Dee and Justin, people whose roots run deep into the tougher than steel Oklahoma soil.